and fellow Toastmasters. My talk is about stopping the flow of plastic into our oceans profitably. I grew up in Malibu in, uh, about to say the 50s, so it was a little bit different. Actually, it was, my, my parents moved out there because it was cheap, <laughs> too far out of town. And uh, I didn't surf. I was kind of an oddball that didn't surf because it was too clicky. And I loved the ocean, so I took a tandem surfboard, and then I made, hollowed it out, and I made my first sit-on-top kayak. Now, sit-on-top kayak, you sit on top of it rather than inside of it. And I loved the ocean, and it got me out through the surf, and I had all these you know, wonderful encounters with dolphins and everything. And to make a long story short, after a bunch of years and a lot of work, I was making, I started a company that was making 200 of these things a day, in the spring anyway. And then moved up here, actually I moved up here when we did that. And uh, I got millions of people into the water and it really made me, I initially I had kind of a fear of the water and this overcoming, helping the other people overcome their fear of the water really made me feel good. I just got a letter from a guy that had been working there for his whole adult life and he just, he just uh, he's moving on to other things and he said thank you and that really meant a lot to me. Uh, so there's a lot of people that really got involved with the water and loved the water and they gave, became more sensitive to the uh, pollution out there. There was another guy that I met way back when, he was just starting Patagonia at the time, y Yvonne Chouinard. He said if we don't protect the environment that we're selling into, we won't be selling things for very long. And really his, he had a, a, a passion for the ocean and a commitment to keep everything clean. We worked with the Surfrider Foundation, which helped clean up different parts of the Pacific coast, and now they're worldwide. But there was, there's a lot of pollution that comes out of surf breaks, and uh, it makes people sick, and they've even killed people with the pollution that the surfers had come out. You know. Then, a little while, right around that time, when I was developing all this, they discovered this plastic island. And Plastic Island isn't really just like an island that you can walk on. It's just a bunch of scattered plastic out there. And then I wondered, am I part of the problem? Because I was making these kayaks and making, you know, we got 40,000 pounds of this plastic every week. And we were making kayaks and we were making 200 a day. And I really wondered, was I part of the problem or going to be part of the solution? A friend of mine at that time, his name was Elmer Good. He made this plastic that was really, really amazing. It was molecularly all, it actually if you made a kayak out of it, technically it was all one molecule. So it was super tough, but it was deemed unrecyclable for this reason. And Elmer being Elmer figured out a way of grinding this stuff up and fusing it back together. More on Elmer later. Right now, we can't live without plastics. Plastic is in every part of our lives, just like it's in every part of the ocean, all over the place. And what if we had no plastic? What if right now all of our plastic just evaporated and poof, we didn't have any plastic? Well, we wouldn't have our phone, couldn't call anybody, wouldn't have our computers, no email or anything, wouldn't have our cars, because they're half plastic. And biggest of all, we wouldn't have food, because like the, one plastic bag, if you think about it, it's this one thin layer of plastic that separates our fresh food from a tons of bacteria that can get in there and make it spoil. And people don't realize how, how much we depend on that. And we can't turn back now. It's, it's, we are committed to, to using plastics. And if, if, if we eliminated those plastics, things would go bad for our food in hours. We could have some really, really scary situations, uh, especially if one country, if you can imagine one country would run out of this stuff before another country. It could be like Syria, because it's, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's that, that critical of a thing. There would be refugees and all kinds of stuff. Now, even if we had a year, somebody said, I'm going to take plastic away from you, but it's going to take a year. There's nothing to replace it, and we couldn't make that, that happen. Even just the plastic, the fuel savings in lighter weight plastic containers 
is, is a, has a huge, huge impact, not even about food, food store spoiling, but the, uh, the fact that the, uh, the, the plastic containers were so dependent on even plastic containers. And there's, there's uh, you know, really nothing that, that does, does that. Definition of plastic is something that's moldable and can take on different shapes. There's just nothing that, that quite does that. So if we had a year and, and things, so it's like we're probably all going to die, right? But wait, there's more bad news. In my next speech, I'll talk about the real problem of plastic worldwide. And there's some very, very interesting things with that. And I'll go into the different uh, things about what it's doing on a global level, although there is a lot of benefits. The last talk will be on the solution, and I'll focus on what we can actually do to solve this problem and create profit. And that's my commitment. Thank you very much.